I'm going to show you how to expand binomials using this uh, proper method, so to speak. We're going to use this binomial theorem to do it. So in the other uh, video that I showed you, it was all about uh, Pascal's triangle and that method. So I'm going to try to show you a better way, at least, of finding these Pascal's coefficients. By the way, this one right here is a little bit sad, but isn't it? I, mean, I don't know about you, but I sometimes feel this way, right? This squishy cat squashes the garbage down with his squasher downer. <laughs> All right, so this is a much better method of finding Pascal's coefficients. What do I mean by this? Uh, well, let's say you have to do something that's, uh, instead of making it really simple, like x plus 3 to the power of 5, let's say you had to do it to, like, to the power of 18. That would be really bad to do it with Pascal's triangle, just because you'd have to do Pascal's triangle all the way, you know, all the way down until you had a 1 and 18 and da, 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 da. you'd have 19 different terms here. This would be really gross. I don't feel like doing it that way. So that's why, I mean, that's clearly not the best way to do it. There's a better way. So how do we do it? Well, we're going to have to understand factorials first. So let me just first introduce to you what a factorial actually is. So a factorial, it's not just an exclamation mark, it's actually a mathematical um, notation to mean this thing here. So what it means is that if we're going to do uh, a factorial, you multiply a number uh, times the number before it, and times the number before that, and times the number before that, until you reach 1. So for example, uh, let's say it was n, that's what we started with, then I would multiply that by one number less than that, so that would be n minus 1. I would multiply that by n minus 2. I would multiply that by dot, dot, dot. You get the idea, right? You keep going until you'd have, you know, 3 times 2 times 1. So you'd keep going until you reach 1. That's what a factorial is. That is a really bad joke, you know, like, uh, you know, what if I said, like, uh, what's 3 factorial? And the bad joke is it's 3! You're supposed to yell it, but no. Let's actually figure it out. Just to show you, uh, just to play with factorials here, this would be 3 times 2 times 1. That we don't need a calculator for. 3 times 2 is 6, times 1 is just 6. All right, 5 factorial, well, that would be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. What would that be? Well, 5 times 4 is 20. 20 times 3 is 60. Isn't it? Yes, 60 times 2 is 120. So there we go, I'd have 120. Ta-da! So... Let's actually keep going. So we're going to keep going with this. We're going to have something called a binomial coefficient. These are actually going to be helpful in determining these coefficients here instead of Pascal's triangle. So let me show you what I mean here. So we have this notation. It's called NCR. I mean, this is, uh, if you're SL, it suffices to just go like this. If you're in HL, you're going to learn a lot more about this. It's a topic called combinatorics. Uh, but I mean, there, it's, it's really about how many ways you can choose R things from N, where we don't care about the order, because we have something else called permutations NPR. But let's not worry about that. We'll just do the SL stuff. So NCR is what we need. The notation often looks like this, NCR. Now, I've seen it look like this, so let me just show you the different notation here. Notation-wise, we have sometimes it's called NCR. Sometimes I've seen it with the N or the C or the R like this. In your formula book, they write it like this. Sometimes you write it like this, like NR, like this. This is like a compact way to write it. So, for example, if I want to do a 6C2, that means how many ways are there of picking two things out of a total of six different things? Well, I could write it like 6, 2, for example. Well, that's sort of just so you can see the notation that we use. I don't mean a vector here. If you know about vectors, I just mean like this. So let's actually keep going. So NCR, um, we actually have a formula for this in our formula booklet, thank goodness. So you don't have to memorize this, but it has to do with factorials. That's why I wanted to give you the definition of a factorial. So uh, it is N factorial. Divide that by, uh, how does it go? It's R factorial times N minus R. Uh, and all that factorial. This you need to be able to do by hand. Now, good news, it's not nearly as bad as it seems. So let me just show you this particular example here. So n, so 5c3, for example. We want to do that one. Well, I would do, let's see, 5 is my n, and 3 is my r. So for this one right here, I would do 5 factorial over 3 factorial times 5 minus 3 all that factorial. So just to show you then, that would be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Divide that by 
uh, well, we would have 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2 times 1. All that times, uh, well, this is 2 factorial, so that's 2 times 1. See what I'm doing here? So one thing I could do, actually, is um, I could get rid of, for example, the 2 times 1. Actually, I could even get rid of the 3 times 2 times 1. See that one right there? So those will actually cancel out. This is just 2. So to see how this one here ends up just being 20 over 2. So that just ends up equaling 10. So that right there is it. Now you could actually do this on a calculator if you needed to. Let me just show you how to do this actually on your trusty calculator. So if I do this right here on my TI Inspire at least, I go to Menu and I go to, uh, is it Statistics? No, Probability. There it is. Combinations, not Permutations. I would do NCR. And watch carefully here then if I want to do it like this. They like it with a comma, so I'll go 5, comma, 3. Notice it's 10. So see how they just calculated it for me, which is nice. Different calculators have different notations. Sometimes you have to go 5, NCR, 3. You have to actually, you'd have to actually type 5, then do the NCR, then you do 3. That's one way. So this is how we actually do it on your calculator, at least.